Salutations to the Truth Corps, whoever and wherever you may be on the planet. I'm here today with a simple and direct message. I'm here to tell you why I am anathema. Now that's an unusual word. You may never have heard that word. It's actually a word that is used in reference to theological debates. So I'll read you something that I've found on the internet, which describes that word and its use and refers also to its derivation. It says here that it came to be used in the 1520s to mean an accursed thing. It's from the Latin anathema, an excommunicated person, or the curse of excommunication. Apparently, this term comes from ecclesiastical Greek. It is a Greek word, simply meaning something that is accursed. It also means, and can mean, a thing devoted. So it means both a thing devoted in some way and a thing detested. Literally, it is a thing set up such as a votive offering in a temple. And it is from ana, meaning up, and a Greek verb, tithene, which means to put or to set in its place. So the entry says, by the time it reached late Latin, the meaning of the Greek word had progressed through thing devoted to evil to thing accursed or damned. And it adds that it has come to mean an act a formula of excommunicating and consigning to damnation by ecclesiastical authority. Quite a powerful term there. It's quite interesting, I find, that the original reference to it, to a material act, would be the reference of setting up an altar, hence a thing devoted. But in the course of time, in the way that it has come to be used, it represents a thing to be condemned or damned, and in particular, an idea to be condemned or damned. And the result of anathema in the institution of the church, even today, is excommunication. So the authorities, you remember who they are, condemn someone as anathema when that someone represents or expresses something that they don't like. So there you have it. I am anathema. I have been condemned and in some way excommunicated. Well, obviously, I haven't been excommunicated from any church because I don't belong to one, but I have been excommunicated from the modern day body of scholars and commentators on Gnosticism, the Nag Hammadi codices and the Sophianic myth. I am anathema to those people today who are promoting and propagating their interpretation of that myth. I am a heretic to be condemned for my interpretation of that myth. Something just prompted me a couple of hours ago to come and sit here in the corner at three in the morning and record this talk. 
Someone sent me a link to a video on a YouTube channel called Greg Braden Official. And the title of the video is The Creation of the Universe, The False Reality, and The Divine Spark. The content of this video concerns the writings of the Gnostics from Nakamadi. And at a certain point around halfway through, it goes into a retelling of the Sophianic myth and presents the interpretation of half a dozen people, including my old friend and colleague, Graham Hancock, and obviously Greg Braden. Now this production is an introduction, apparently, to a series of videos that will be devoted to the Gnostic teachings and the central feature of those teachings, which is the myth of the Aeons of Fire. The channel, which has 322,000 subs, is linked to Gaia.com. You can see the logo down in the lower right-hand corner of the video. This introductory video has really, really high production values. It was certainly expensive to make, and apparently there's a whole series coming after it. And I can only imagine that it took hundreds of thousands of dollars to produce this series that Greg Braden is launching. At a moment, at a time, we would say in the Gnostic school today, by apposition to my talk on the release of the 15th anniversary edition of Not in His Image, and I do intend to be promoting my book over the next few months as this series of videos becomes available. Now, it won't take me long to explain why I am anathema, but before I do, I'd like to make an observation. When you consider the problem the world is facing today because of the pandemic, one thing you may notice, it's extremely obvious, is that there is no debate on the mainstream media. In other words, you hear 24-7 the promotion of the narrative of the pandemic, and even though if you know where to look or you want to take the time to look, you can find other opposing voices you don't find those two parties on the same stage. So there is no actual true frontal debate about the narrative about the pandemic, is there? Likewise, there is so far no frontal debate about the fact that there are different interpretations of the Gnostic message and the Sophianic myth. As a matter of fact, there are principally two views. This video presents one view. I present a different view. But I am anathema. I am damned and condemned because I present something particular that they never mention. And that is the main reason, that is the absolutely certain reason why I am anathema. So I would expect that as the series unfolds, they're going to do one hell of a job with high production videos in promoting a particular interpretation of the fallen goddess scenario. They've got the stage, they've got the platform, they've got untold finances behind them, and I don't, and I'm not on that stage. 
But suppose that I were on that stage, what would I look like? Well, picture them. Picture yourself in an auditorium. Make it live, not a video. There they are with a PowerPoint presentation, all of their slick professional clips, beautifully edited, everything framed and photographed, and they're sitting there, Graham Hancock, Greg Braden, several others, and they're expounding on the Sophianic myth. And over there, on the side of the stage, on the floor, is a viper, a really, really dangerous viper, a venomous snake. That's me. And they will not allow that snake to get anywhere near them. I'm there. I am the only scholar in the world at the level of the material they're presenting, but I'm excluded from the presentation. But let's just picture me on the stage, coiled up in the corner, that dangerous viper with its venom. I am anathema because I bring the Sophianic message to the world with venom. They don't. And they don't want to get anywhere near me because they might get bitten by that snake. And that venom that I carry could kill them. It could kill their message. It has that power. So what is the venom? Well, what is the unmentionable? Is there something unmentionable? Something that must not be said that is contained in the Gnostic legacy from Nag Hammadi. What is it that they will never mention? What is it that causes them, compels them, forces them to exclude me? What part of the Gnostic message do they not want the public to know? Well, and not in his image, I lay it out in no uncertain terms. I explain in detail and I support my argument with facts and evidence. And I show that the Gnostics warned about something particular when they talked about the Archons. Now, they talk about the Archons in this introductory video. That's easy enough to do. And they interpret who the Archons were. And one of the things they say is that the Demiurge, which is another name for the Lord Archon, the head of the authorities, created the material world. Well, I don't say that, do I? I say that the Aeon Sophia herself turned into this material world. But that's not the unmentionable. We could debate about that, and it would be relatively harmless. And the conversation could go on as an amiable conversation between two groups of scholars who disagree, or one group of scholars who disagree with one individual scholar. And it could unfold that way, and it might be very instructive to the world to know that there is another way to interpret that myth. And that conversation could transpire without the unmentionable. But the message that I send into the world cannot be received without the venom that is in it. The venom is contained in that part of the Gnostic message that describes explicitly how the Archons gained access to the divine experiment on this planet. 
how they hacked in to the human races. They did it in a particular way, at a particular time, and I've explained all that in Not In His Image. So I want to thank you all for your responses recently to what I've put out on my channel, and especially to your beautiful and encouraging messages about my book following the recent upload about the 15th anniversary edition coming out this summer. And I want you all to know that that venom is the cure. It's the cure for the problem of the authorities. That's why it's unmentionable to anyone who is complicit with the authorities. Venom, that particular part of the Gnostic message, concerns, well, do you know what it concerns? I think you do. So you're in a position now, thanks to Greg Braden and Gaia.com, to inform yourself about people who have a different version of the myth. And so you have two versions to look at and compare. And that is a responsibility that comes to you from knowing my work. That's about it, about all I have to say. So I will slither away to my nest and I will always have my fangs ready. I will always be vigilant, always ready to strike with my venom and to speak the unmentionable. And that is why I am anathema. Enough said. And I'll be seeing you in the beauty to come.